Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to Beer Budget Moto. If you guys have never been here before, thanks for joining in. Uh, for everyone who's been here before, thanks for returning. Uh, it's been a little bit since I posted anything. Uh, as everyone knows, 2020 has been a wild, crazy year. Um, my wife and I actually just had a baby a couple months ago. Uh, things did not exactly go what you would say smooth or uh, as expected. So we've just been very busy with things and uh, a little distracted with everything that's going on. So I apologize, it's been a while since I posted anything. But um, today we are working on my 2002 SeaDoo GTX Di. Um, I don't believe I've had any videos of this on the channel before. I picked it up two years ago with a blown engine and the previous owner had taken it to a shop and they had already dismantled it and diagnosed that it uh, had spun a crankshaft bearing. So I bought it as a haul and trailer and a box full of parts, uh, what the engine you know, was, was in boxes of, of parts. So I had the engine sent out and rebuilt last summer. Um, I installed it at the end of last season. I was chasing a couple of other gremlins with it. Uh, it had a bad fuel injector that was stuck open, so it was stalling out uh, right off of idle, and it just wasn't really making a ton of power. So I had a local shop look at it a couple weeks ago. They diagnosed it as a stuck open fuel injector. We threw a used injector in it at the shop, and I took it out last weekend to test ride it and see if it was fixed and good to go. Um, it ran really, really good for about 20 minutes. I uh, was getting top speed out of it about 50, 51 miles an hour, which is about right for this model ski. And um, unfortunately, I was cruising back across the river. I was getting ready to throw it on the trailer, and the thing just started losing power on me. And what I found was the engine actually locked up. I'm not sure why, uh, but if you hit the start button, it just uh, it just won't even turn over. So I tried turning it over by hand um, when I got home make sure it wasn't just like an electrical issue or a weak battery connection and unfortunately that's not the case the engine is locked up so today what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, we're gonna move the wife's car here out of the way we're gonna wheel the jet ski out in front of the garage and we're gonna probably throw an easy up over it because uh, as you can tell it's bright sunny and humid here in PA today uh, so we're gonna throw the easy up uh, over top of us and we're gonna just do a quick time lapse of me pulling the engine out of this thing today I've got to get it uh, pulled out and stripped down because the place I had the, to rebuild the engine last season, it came with a two-year uh, no-fault warranty. So basically, it doesn't matter what happened to the engine. I could have installed it wrong. The oil injection system could have failed, uh, could have ran out of oil. It didn't, but the point is it could have, uh, and they will warranty the engine for two years no matter what happens to it. Uh, so I'm going to pull it out and get it sent back to them. They're going to rebuild it. Uh, hopefully in the next couple weeks send it back to me and then we'll throw it in we'll take it out to the river i'll take you guys along and we'll test ride it again and hopefully she'll stay together this time so hang tight guys we're going to do a quick time lapse we're going to get everything moved around here and we're going to get this engine ripped out today so hang tight we'll see you in a minute
right guys you can see that we've got the engine out here uh, this is what we are left with so in order for me to send it back I've got to pull this front cover off you get your oil injection system here which all these lines are new and they're all full of oil so I don't know if that was the problem or not it could have been an issue with the rebuild it could have been an issue with this injection system like I said all these lines you can see have fresh oil in them so I think they would be empty if it ran out of oil but maybe it wasn't getting enough oil uh, I'm not quite sure but uh, I mean if, if we try to spin this over by hand it just does not does not want to move so she's locked up solid um, we're gonna pull this engine mount bracket off we're gonna pull the starter off we're gonna pull these intake boots off and the reeds this is a direct injected two-stroke so although it does have direct fuel injection with fuel injectors it is a two-stroke so it still has reeds in here uh, we're gonna get the exhaust manifold off the front cover like I said uh, we're gonna get this injection pump here it's an air injection pump we're gonna get that off of there um, this exhaust hanger bracket we're gonna pull these oil lines off and basically everything that you can tell has a fresh coat of paint on it the head the uh, upper cylinder here and then the bottom end uh, you can tell it still has a fresh paint job on it from last year when the uh, they rebuilt it and then I just put you know everything all the old stuff back on uh, it's still a little corroded and everything from the original engine so just gonna send back everything that you see here that's still freshly painted I'm gonna send it back to them and uh, we're gonna see what they say as far as why this thing locked up so this is what we're left with uh, we've got our throttle bodies here we've got the direct injection system we've got uh, these are called rave valves this is a Sea-Doo Rotax thing uh, from what I understand these valves open up at high RPM and allow for a little bit better combustion and air fuel ratio and everything uh, basically it's almost like a Sea-Doo version of VTEC from what I understand so uh, this is what we're left with basically just a bunch of hoses and cables and wires if you've never worked on a jet ski before um, it's not like a car where you can just crawl underneath it to get the things on the bottom or get in through the side through a fender well or something like that I mean this is basically this hole is what you have to work with um, there is no access panels or anything like that so you've got to work from the top um, you've got to reach in you know obviously it's sitting on a trailer you've got to reach in over the side dig down in there and then some of these cables and hoses and everything you can see hook in from you know the bottom or the side and uh, those are what I was disconnecting when I was starting to pull the engine out basically once I got the engine up off of the bottom of the hull and had a little bit of room to to work get my hands under there and spin the engine around to some angles that were more convenient to get to some of these nuts and bolts but uh, you know luckily I'm 6'2 so it's not terrible for me to jump in there and reach over the the side of this thing and dig down in there I've got long arms but I can imagine if you were a little bit shorter that this would be a real pain in the butt and so jet skis are kind of their own little nightmare uh, they're a lot of fun when they're working well but as with anything that uh, runs on the water and has water running through it and and then you've got you know direct injection systems and everything they're just notorious for uh, longevity issues so this ski has 177 hours on it it had like 176 on it last year when I put this engine in so this engine only has like an, a solid hour on it but um, I put it together last year not knowing how it came apart so it did take me quite a while to get it apart um, this clip here I let the camera run the whole time it took about an hour and 40 minutes from start to finish um, and that was with you know working pretty much straight through and uh, not remembering a whole lot from last year uh, it'll take a little bit more time to put it back together just because you know trying to fit these hoses on make sure everything's tight and lined up um, it seems to always be a little bit more difficult to put things together than it does to take them apart where you can just zip stuff off throw it to the side and worry about it later so about an hour and 40 minutes to get it out of here which is actually much faster than I thought I thought it was gonna take me like four or five hours so I'm happy that I didn't spend all day doing this but um, like I said, I'm not going to bore you guys with me stripping it down. You can see we got it out. It's completely free. We're going to set it over here in the garage. 
and uh, I'm going to get it stripped down. We're going to throw it in a tub, get it packed up, and we're going to send it off USPS, or I'm sorry, UPS to uh, over towards Philly where the shop is, and they're going to tear it apart and see what happened and rebuild it for me. So we've got some other projects going on. There's a little teaser there in the driveway, if you could tell from that. But uh, that'll be in another video. That's another project we just got. You might have seen some evidence of what's going on there in the garage just now as well. But um, anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap this video up. This was a time lapse of how to remove the engine on this 2002 SeaDoo GTX DI. So stay tuned. We'll do a quick video of me putting this engine back in in a couple weeks once I get it back from the shop. And we'll do a first startup, and then we'll uh, we'll take it down the river, and we'll show you how how she gets down, how she rips. So. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Stay safe.